So the recording is started, and um, I'm gonna. Last time I did this, let's see. Last time I did this, we had a black screen in the recording because I wasn't sharing my screen. So I'm gonna share my screen now, just so that we don't have a blank box there. Um, so maybe a couple people could let me know they can see my screen as well, and. Uh, because I see it in the audience view, but I always like to be sure. So today marks our last live session where we get together to have a discussion about questions that you have, things that we've been doing, uh, that sort of thing. Um, the community itself will continue on. So you know, as you have questions, you you know, the Google Plus community remains a good place to to ask questions or to ask for feedback on a survey that you're getting ready to launch. Um, so I would encourage you to do that. This week, uh, the one of the videos that you were asked to watch was about uh, reporting, uh, which is to me one of the more maybe not the most robust area of Qualtrics. The uh, the reports that it generates, certainly being able to download a spreadsheet version and then do whatever you want with it is, is incredibly useful. But um, I always am challenged by, uh, you know, actually making pretty reports from the web interface. So I usually go with downloading it, but a lot of times we don't need pretty reports, so it's not that big a deal. So first thing I want to do is just kind of open it up and see if people had particular questions either about uh, reporting, some of the things we've talked about with survey building, uh, some of the things that we suggested as follow-on activities around panels uh, for, for non-anonymous surveys. Um, any questions that come to mind, feel free to jump right in. Um, like I said, Karen, I had to mute you because I was getting some feedback. So if you'd like to speak to the group, just raise your hand and I'll unmute you from my end. As I mentioned last week, I will have uncomfortable pauses in my talking to give you guys an opportunity to speak up, and I don't mind being silent. So please, if you have questions, things for discussion, please let me know. Otherwise, we can talk about a, a few things that I have on my mind. Steve, I can start us off with a question. That'd be great. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Okay. I um, was noticing in the reporting video that um, there was an option to select out survey tests and survey previews um, from your report and I don't know how to do that. <laughs> it, it said that you were able to do it, but it didn't. It didn't show you how to do it. So I wondered if you could show us, or if you knew, or if anybody else knows. Sure. Let's see if anyone else knows first, and then I'll take a stab at it. Anybody want to jump in? Okay, so right now uh, you should be seeing on my screen, I'm looking at the survey responses to the online surveys co-learning sign up. So this is the, the initial Qualtrics survey that you guys all filled out when you sort of joined this, uh, this learning session. So when I look at that, if I scroll down the page a bit, you can see there are a whole bunch of um, responses in here. And at the top, there is a response search criteria area. And one of the things that we can do is we can actually change the response type that we're looking at. So down in this column, you'll see the response type. 
all of these are IP address. This was an anonymous survey, so basically it collects the respondent corresponds to the IP address. If I had taken and not deleted um, surveys that I either tested or previewed, um, they would show up here. So I would, in this drop down box, I can select survey preview and search, and it would filter my list down here to only those that were response type of survey preview. So just to give you an example, let's see if I come over here. I'm going to preview this survey. I think that's the only thing that was required. I'm going to say I live in the middle of Alaska in honor of Alda. Uh, which one didn't I answer? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, so I've submitted that survey in preview mode. I'm going to close out of here and I'm going to go back over to my results. And now within my results, it should work. It didn't work. And so under survey test, I have this just changed over to preview. Don't do this too quickly. I can see my survey preview that I just took. So today at 1.06 p.m. Eastern, if I want to see the actual response, I can come in and see this is what I typed in. And so if I want to get rid of that out of my results set at this point, I would just check the box and delete it. So now I no longer have a survey preview in my response set, which is going to help when I actually go to analyze the results or print out the results or anything else. Okay. Now, Bridget, your other question I think was about um, that video also mentioned that you could, if there was a respondent who um, said, oh, finish the survey, you know, or I want to go back and change some answers, how would you do that? How would you identify their survey? And unfortunately, I don't think there is a good way um, to like automatically do that um, because most of these fields, so first name, last name, email address, these are, are going to be based on um, sort of people logging in or I mean people being part of a panel. So the best thing I can come up with as a way to do that is to, you would need to know when they took the survey. And as you can see, when you send out a survey, you tend to get a flurry of people that fill it out and then long breaks where not as many people fill it out. So the only way I, I know of to do that would be to take a look at the individual survey and see what is filled in. You know, so, but if you don't ask for any personally identifiable information, I think it would be difficult. Um, with anonymous surveys, I just, I'm not clear. And so I would welcome feedback from anybody else who's figured out a way to do that, how they would reopen a survey for someone. So one one thing I'm showing. Let me see, someone's. Hey Sarah, can you mute? Thank you. I hate to mute my boss. So one thing that Karen mentioned is also on the uh, response page under advanced options over here on the right. 
if I click on that, I can actually delete survey previews or tests. I can delete all responses, offline responses, etc. And the other day, someone asked about if you could import responses. Um, and indeed, you can. And if you go to the import responses page, you'll actually, it has a link to an Excel document um, that you can download that contains all the columns for your questions. So if you um, have a whole bunch of items to enter, it may be easier for you to enter them into, uh, uh, I think, who was it, Barbara maybe, was saying that she does mostly paper surveys and then enters the data herself. And so this is one way to do it. If it's easier to enter into a spreadsheet file and then import it, you're able to do that uh, from, this, from this window. So you can download the example document. I'll give that a second to download. And it's going to give me the fields that I want to, um, to fill in. So I can just fill in through here in the spreadsheet. Again, maybe faster for you. It depends probably on the number of questions and, and how easily you can do it. Um, but then you could, once you had saved that, and I'm not going to save it. then I would select that file again here, browse for it, upload it, and it will allow me to um, import responses into this so that I would then have a whole series. Every row would correspond to a response. Yeah, and Karen mentions if they know their IP address. Um, you know, that's a hard one sometimes. I mean, I do this stuff all the time, so I can sort of look at some of them, and I know that if something says 132.177, that's somebody from the UNH network. Um, and so you could, if you knew that someone was on Comcast cable, you could say, oh, well, their IP address must start with, I think it's 50 is what Comcast starts with. So you could do it that way. But again, it's kind of a challenging way to do it, I think. But it is possible. What other questions or comments do people have? I see Arlene is saying something in the chat. To recap, surveys designed on Qualtrics, printed out as a paper survey, and then results are entered into the form for import under advanced options. Yes, that is one way to do it. I know a lot of people, again, depending on the length of your form and everything, where they will actually just um, take the survey as if they were the respondent based on a paper survey response. So it just depends on your comfort level, you know, how hard your questions are to, um, to deal with, you know, and certainly the question type. For instance, on that Qualtrics, for, for this sign up form, we had a heat map where people clicked to indicate on the map where they were coming from. That would be hard to replicate in the, in the, um, spreadsheet because you'd have to know their latitude, not actually not their latitude and longitude, you would need to know the coordinates of that picture where they're coming from. So that sometimes you want to do it through the survey itself, other times, you know, just doing it into a spreadsheet file may be easier. Or you may have a spreadsheet that's generated from someplace else that you want to import. And thank you. And where did you get the heat map from? Or how did you create that as part of your survey? So um, I believe Sarah Boffman was the uh, instigator of this when we originally did this. Um, essentially, it is a question type. So if I wanted to create a new question, um, oh, heat map. Okay. I can decide what I want. And so I have can do a heat map. Oops. 
Oh, and then I need to select a graphic to use. So you can actually use any picture you want um, for that heat map. So in other words, I could use our logo and I would could say click on the area of the logo that you like the most or like the least, or you could show, um, you know, if you were, you can upload a picture of a map like this one, I believe Alda in um, the Google Plus group showed one where she had uploaded a map of Alaska so that she could ask people where they were from, you know, sort of where they were coming from. Um, the thing you need to recognize is that the actual data may be hard for you to interpret. You know, it's not easy to analyze the data because essentially what happens is since you can have any picture here, mm -hmm. it's just going to give you the coordinates based on, uh, I forget, I think it's from the left corner, left bottom corner maybe, or maybe it's the left top corner. And so it's just going to give you sort of the pixel coordinates of where someone clicked. So if we um, go back to the results of this particular survey, mm -hmm. What you'll see is that for an individual, um, for an individual response, I'm just going to pick someone randomly and hopefully they don't mind. Um, I'll see where they clicked, right? So they clicked, this person clicked in Louisiana. And if I look at the uh, report that has all of the results, then I will get a heat map that shows sort of overall where everyone clicked. So I'll just show you that. And I think I, I posted that picture in a couple places because I think it's interesting for people to know that this was, I mean, we had, um, we had people from Alaska, from Hawaii, you know, Washington State, we sort of covered the, covered the map on this one. And so what you see is there are just more clicks in a certain area, it causes that sort of highlight to appear. So you could think about ways you could use this, you know, if you're a nutrition educator and you want to show, you know, pieces of food and ask people to select the one that had the lowest um, sodium content, let's say, or the highest fat content, and you could just ask them to click on it. Um, and then you could sort of base, you know, get an idea from that. So it's sometimes people, it, it makes your survey just a little bit different. Um, and as Sarah said in the, in the chart, you know, shiny objects are, are sometimes nice to play with, but also when people are doing a survey, sometimes it's nice to, to do that. And I suppose you could even use like a where's Waldo thing and see if people can find Waldo, but that's probably copyrighted. And Brenda's mentioning, yep, some of that stuff causes accessibility issues. Um, so, you know, depending on how your university has their sort of policy set within the Qualtrics admin, you may or may not be able to use some of the question types. I think that just all depends on how rigidly your university enforces the accessibility policies. Thank you. That was very interesting, and I like shiny objects. I think we all do one way or another. Some of us <laughs> just don't admit it. Folks have other questions, comments? Has anybody been uh, played around with panels at all for non-anonymous surveys?
you guys will get to experience being on the receiving end of a survey based on a panel because sometime next week or the week after we'll probably be sending out a, a brief evaluation survey about this uh, session and I will use a panel of those people who registered to send that out and then the the nice thing about that is then I can bug you after the fact so if people don't fill it out I can send them reminder emails and the reminder emails only go to people who have not completed the survey so there are times when having a panel is a, is a nice uh, tool to have. Brenda or Lynn, do you want to talk about how you use panels? Hi, this is Brenda. Um, I use them for a kind of a personnel review situation where we have um, agents reviewing specialists and I set it up and then every year I go in and I just um, update it before I send out the review. Nice. Yeah, if you have a sort of captive audience, if you will, uh, the panels can can be really nice to aid you in, in kind of getting a higher response rate. I will tell you that even with panels, you, you probably won't get to 100% response rate, but um, they can be helpful. And I used a panel for our fitness challenge for Cooperative Extension in New Hampshire, and it was um, it was fairly easy to send people a link if they either didn't mean to complete the survey and they you know ended it prematurely or um, you know whatever whatever types of things that I needed to do. It is not automated though. Right, you need to go in and, and uh, create the email that you want to send and who you want to send it to and when you want to send it. Well, it actually gives you a link if you go in because you know who the respondent is. So it gives you a link to, to send to them by, and I send it by email. Right, but um, you can distribute to the entire panel or um, you can also remind the entire panel and everyone in the panel who hasn't responded if that's what you're trying to do, that sort of thing. Oh yes, of course. Yeah, I was speaking specifically to the question you were talking about earlier where um, you were talking about if someone needed to restart a survey or, or something like that. Right. Yeah, it's, it's a lot easier to do that if you're using a panel because you can find the person as opposed to trying to guess based on time that they took the survey and the IP address. Do folks have other questions, comments, concerns about Qualtrics? Uh, this is Arlene again. In, uh, uh... Upstate New York Cornell Cooperative Extension. That last column on the screen under actions, what are those for each of the panels? Oh, retake. Oh, that's where retake is. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's the, that's where they were talking about. It. For instance, if I knew that this particular person uh, needed to, you know, they realize they made a mistake or they wanted to change something in their survey, I can allow them to uh, retake the survey. And the choices are to either retake the survey or retake it as a new response. So if you just say retake the survey, it basically updates their response record. But if you do it as a new response, then you'd get an additional response in.
On the left, you have um, little check boxes next to the response IDs, um, as well as select all or none. So if I wanted to make a sub group of this panel, I could make a, a new panel that's like a, a, a subsection of this full panel. <laughs> Um, not exactly. From here, you know, you have the option to either view or delete the responses. Um, the, the other component of sort of your um, results is that you can choose to have results go into different um, uh, no, I can't remember what it's called. It's not a response group, but anyway, a bucket. So, for instance, in this in this particular uh, survey, this was the the sign up survey for this. We ran this a similar session to this, uh, you know, two and a half years ago or so, and so all of those responses are in my um, initial. Uh, in my initial, yeah, I said leave this page. Let's see if it catches that. Yeah, so you can see that these initial responses, in my initial response set, were all from back in 2013. So it had about 209 responses to the survey back then. Um, but I can look at other, I then said in this year in January, I said any new responses should go into a different uh, response set. And that is under the survey options, I believe. the response set new responses go into. And so generally you just have a default response set, but you can create other response sets to, so that you could say, you know, I want to separate out my responses by month or year, or you made a change to the survey. And so you want to make sure that you're, you're getting uh, different things. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Sure. The other option is just to create a copy of the survey <laughs> and just have a new, a whole new set. And if I'm going to make edits, major edits to the survey, to the questions and everything, I will usually do that. But if I'm essentially using the same question set again, uh, mm -hmm. then I just then I just create another response set. Just makes it easier when I'm looking at the results. Okay, and then so like I have a survey that I'm going to be doing maybe every year or every other year, and so I would modify that survey because it's asking stuff about different places a group has been. But if it's the same group, can I keep that same panel and attach that panel to a different survey? Yep, panels are are handled totally separately. So there's a a panels area in here. And so you can see panels that you have created um, and the number of people that are in them. You can, from here, we can export, um, we can send an email to the panel, or we can just go in and take a look at that panel, for example, and see everyone who's in here. So we can edit people individually. So I might come in here, this happens to be from some time ago, uh, a list of staff in a in a particular county, um, and I can say, oh, I just realized that two of these people have um, retired, so I'm just going to delete them out of the panel. But this panel itself, the Grafton County panel, would be available wherever I choose to um, to use it. So when I, if I want to distribute my survey. Um, now I have to have it active, but let's, yeah, we'll activate it. Sounds good. 
once I have a survey active, then I can choose to email the survey. And when I click in the to field to select, I can look at my library and I'll have all the panels that I've created. And so I can choose to, um, for instance, that Grafton County one, I can choose to send it to the entire panel. I can select the panel sample or I can send it to just one of the individuals on the panel as well. And you can have shared panels as well. So if you have uh, libraries set up, you know, by default you'll have your own library, um, but you can also have sort of shared group libraries. So if, if, you, if a number of your colleagues were collaborating on similar surveys and they were going to the same panel of people, you could use that and, and maintain a sort of group panel, if you will. Does that make sense? Sure. Yes. Well, continue field, jump in here with some Qualtrics questions, but I also wanted to take this opportunity while you ha while I have you here to um, just get some feedback if, if you're willing to share about the way the session was run in general. Um, the, the real driving force for us behind this session is that we have people of uh, varying levels sounds pejorative maybe, but you know, some people created their first survey ever in Qualtrics while they were a part of the session. Other people had created a large number of surveys and were just refining, maybe contributing some, you know, feedback, that sort of thing in the Google Plus community. And it's um, also my belief, and I think I share that with uh, Bridget and Sarah, that oftentimes people don't, um, just attending a webinar for an hour doesn't really give you the capacity to um, to then apply those skills. And so a lot of what we're trying to do here is to create an environment where people would be comfortable experimenting, asking for feedback and, and sharing the knowledge they have. So with that, kind of setting the stage on why we chose to run this the way we did, not a formal training class, not a series of webinars, not a Moodle classroom or hands-on training. Um, I'd love to get some feedback from people about things that they thought worked well, things that they think um, could have been done better uh, because you know we, we may very well run this sort of session again in the future, either around Qualtrics or some other technology or, or skill. So if people could, I would really appreciate you if you give me feedback. If you don't want to share it here, I will um, be asking you this anyway in a evaluation survey in a, in a week or two. So you, if, if you feel you need to hold your thoughts till then, that's fine. But I'd love to hear some feedback right now while we can discuss it. This is Lynn Harris, and I just wanted to say that I think it's a great format. Um, it's good for folks that are new, and it's good for people that are intermediate, and then, you know, those that have more knowledge. I still think you can learn something. Great. Thanks, Lynn. I see uh, Sally mentioned in the chat that the first session was a bit too technical for her, and Quite honestly, it was, might have been a bit too technical for me as well. Um, and that was something that I tried to communicate both in the Google Plus group and in the a follow-up email to folks um, and tried to keep these, after that, tried to sort of keep these sessions more, um, maybe focused on some of the more basic things 
there, there are other places and times where we can discuss the nitty gritty technical details of edge cases. What other feedback do people have about sort of the way the session worked, what worked for you, what didn't work for you? I find having you actually pull up the, the screen and go through um, the, the different aspects I found was very helpful and being able to respond directly to questions in real time. Um, and whatever system you have, because we have some online stuff, it, it seems to be very good. Whatever your bandwidth or your streaming capabilities, I think is very good. So nothing glitched or took a long time to, to upload in the viewing mode. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. We're thinking about switching, <laughs> so it's always, it's always nice to know that what we have is good before we decide to switch. I'd love more feedback from folks. I will also just, while, while you're gathering your thoughts, maybe you need to write down what you're going to say, sort of like Abraham Lincoln scribbling the Gettysburg Address on a train. Um, I'll respond to Brenda's question, which is, is there a way to copy a survey that was shared with you? And the answer to that is maybe. Um, so right now I'm, look, I'm in a window looking at um, my surveys. And as I come down here and see these gray dividers, I will see that there are surveys that have been shared with me by a variety of people. Um, and for some of them, I have the option to copy the survey. So that is a setting that the person sharing the survey um, makes. So for instance, this, uh, the survey that we've been playing around with, when I click on collaborate, um, I can share with a variety of people. And so you can see this is shared with Bridget and Sarah and my old boss, Lisa and Sarah at a different address. Um, when I share it, I can decide what I want to share. When I'm working with people that I very close to and want them to be able to, to do anything, I just check all the boxes. Um, but for some folks, you may just want them to be able to view the results. Um, or perhaps you just want them to be able to distribute the survey. Um, so if someone has not checked the copy box when they collaborated with you, then you will not have the option to copy that survey directly. There are probably ways around that. You know, you could, if, they, if you have permission to edit the survey, um, and you'll also see there's a variety of things that you can that you can give them permissions for within editing. Um, but if they have permission to edit, they may be able to you may be able to download the survey in the uh, Qualtrics format and then import it. Um, so Qualtrics has a special export format that preserves all of the question details, and then you could import that back in. I have never tried that um, on a survey that was shared with me, um, but it's probably easier to just go back to the person who shared the survey with you and ask them to go in and just check the copy box so you can make a copy for yourself. And I'm just reading through the, the comments in chat, but again, I welcome people to chime in if you'd like to speak out loud and share something with us. Criticism is uh, very useful for us as well. And just to echo what Sarah said in the chat, 
um, I, I really like getting to see all the different surveys and one of the things that it reminded me of is that I like a lot of other universities templates better than the UNH template. <laughs> the UNH template is pretty bare bones and some of you have a, a really nice mix of university colors and things like that 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 I don't know just made them more appealing to me but that made it I figured design is always in the eye of the beholder but I, did, I also enjoyed seeing the way people approach different questions um, because there's certainly many ways to ask the same question. Okay, well, it is against my uh, nature to, to waste other people's time. Um, I'm pretty good at wasting my own time, but I prefer not to waste other people's time. And so um, if people don't have additional feedback or additional questions, um, I think we'll probably try and wrap up this session. I do want to just say um, that it's been a great experience that you know, the thing I like about this kind of a co-learning session is that um, rather than being an instructor, um, I'm able to, to learn a lot in the process as well, just by responding to the questions, trying to figure out things that I wasn't sure about before, um, forcing me to go back and, and look at some of the Qualtrics resources that are out there. So I appreciate you guys uh, keeping me motivated to do that. Um, I will probably send out one more email uh, through the MailChimp account, they'll just include the recording, for, a link to the recording to today's session, and just you know, sort of some of the suggested resources we had to follow up. I will also tell you that the Google Plus community continues to live on. So it's uh, you know, I know it's not necessarily in everyone's wheelhouse to go there and and do things, but it is available. So if folks have questions. Uh, comments, they want some feedback on things that they're doing. Um, it is a good resource and I, I certainly pay attention to it. Uh, and then the other thing is that in, again, probably in, in a week and a half or two, I will be sent out a Qualtrics survey uh, to ask for some more feedback about uh, the session and and whether you know the degree to which you found it useful um, so I'd appreciate it if uh, folks would give their frank responses to that because again it's it's hard for us to know what we should do different without um, you know a, a little bit of nudging from the people that have participated so I am going to end the recording um, I'll stay on for a little bit longer in case people uh, were recording shy and didn't want to talk about that or if they had very specific questions that they had and they just didn't think that the group would benefit from it. Um, so I'm going to stop the recording now and I uh, truly appreciate having the opportunity to learn a little bit more about Qualtrics with all of you. <laughs>